Bismillahirrahmanirrahim <coughs> Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da Habita fillah One of the most important things that we need to remember is to avoid being extreme. In a habit of Allah, when we refer to extreme, as the ulama have defined it, we're talking about ghulu tajawuz al had, meaning that there is a fine line or the bounds that Allah has set, the bounds of guidance in the Sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us and the one who has who is extreme has went beyond those bounds and in fact when we look at that that definition and you'll find that uh, in some of the books written about ghulu extremism the prophet sallallahu alaihi said iyakum wa ghulu beware of being extreme and in some of the contemporary some of our mashayikh like Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan and, and others when talking about this extremism they defined it as that that it's going and transgressing beyond the bounds of the sh sharia along with that ahabat fillah we've got to remember of bewaring of the two ways in which we can transgress that bounds those bounds and I'm, this is really an address to Ahlul Sunnah, to the Salafiyun. That sometimes we can have the tendency, some people, some of us, maybe myself, maybe my brothers and sisters, different, different, one, different ones from amongst us, might be too harsh. And what I mean by too harsh, Ahabatifillah, don't get this wrong. Don't misunderstand this. Meaning, too harsh, meaning that which the Sharia does not condone. So when you're in the bounds of the Sharia, by refuting Ahl al-Bidah, by not giving salam to Ahl al-Bidah, by making hajr of Ahl al-Bidah, this is something mishroor at times, and at other times, no. Meaning it's legislated at times to leave the salam and make hajr of Ahl al-Bidah, and at other times there's no maslaha. If there's no maslaha in that, as Shaykh al-Islam has detailed countless times throughout his Mijmu'a Fatawa that it's not always in the interest of the believers to make Hajr of Ahl Bidah. So what I'm referring to when we talk about Hulu, this is the, when our brothers and sisters make Hajr of their brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah without the Maslaha, without looking at the Masala and the Mufasid. The other type of ghulu we want to be aware of, ahabatifillah, which is also very dangerous and can, can creep up on us. Because that one is, is easier. If you're a person of good manners and stuff, you know, no one wants to be, be beat down and beat others down. Generally, that's not our, our nature, unless you've been harmed and you have some damage yourself. Or your misunderstandings of the text, so you're always shadid, you're always harsh, you're always stern against the people. Always, without exception. The other type of extremism, ahabatifillah, is when we're too lenient. What I mean by that, and this is where we have to really watch ourselves. We have to watch ourselves from both angles. But if we're too lenient, we may throw away aspects of the Sharia. We might say, no, there's no such thing as hajjah. No, there's nuts. that was in the past. That was what the Salaf did. Uh, no, we shouldn't leave Tarak Salam. We shouldn't leave the Salam on another Muslim ever. No, this is not the case. So that is where some of our brothers and sisters, they begin to sit because they are uh, affected and they are repulsed by what some of their other brothers are doing. Then they go to the other extreme. They fly to the other extreme and they begin to sit with Ahl Bidah and immerse themselves with Ahl Bidah without Maslaha but instead just khalas they feel safe because they're not going to speak about them and they can just talk about something general so we have to be cautious about that 
and ultimately all of these messiah because they're so big and we're just speaking very general they really require fiqh fi deen they require immense study and immense when it comes to making tatbiq and practicing these messiah and i'll say this with all honesty that it you know it really takes that fiqh fi deen of when to apply that and that's why we refer back to the ulama and those those major students of knowledge that we can refer back to who have some fiqh and who are not quick to be on from their asl to be on one extreme or another you know because if you go to someone who's always harsh even if he has some knowledge and some fiqh or he has some knowledge perhaps he will be naqs in his fiqh perhaps wallahu alam and he's always going to come with the most the further most uh extreme on how to deal with the issue and if you go to someone you already know aslan is mutasahal in everything then of course they're going to give you the tasahal the, the easiest lightest way which may not always be mishroor so that's why we ask Allah the Almighty for fiqh fi deen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal al-mutaqabbilan وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم